Hey friends, Jim here with Science Talk. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, compound heat waves and what's meant by that and how they can have a double impact. This is now new, considered to be a new climate hazard, compound heat waves. So you, this is uh, some uh, U.S. scientists uh, presenting this and uh, what the saying is, rising mercury follows swiftly by more of the same. So what is meant by compound heat wave? Well, you get a heat wave, it leaves, and then it comes back, like almost immediately. So what the U.S. scientists are saying is that the world warms the risk of economically devastating, physically debilitating, and potentially lethal extremes of heat will multiply and in unexpected ways. Researchers picture a world in which the most vulnerable, those already ill or elderly, housed in substandard buildings in crowded cities, are laid low and gasping by several days of extreme heat. This is their words. Even the temperatures drop a little, the buildings in which they live will, you know, are still storing the heat, and it will, the heat will be at intolerable levels. And then unexpectedly, the extremes of heat return. Hospitals could be overwhelmed. Electric grids might experience overload. Harvest could wither. And the weakest could dehydrate and die. Average over time, heat waves are the most deadly type of disaster in the U.S., United States. In addition to causing many emergency room visits, lost working hours, and lower agricultural yields. This is a statement from uh, Dr. Jane Baldwin of Princeton University. Let me stress that lower agricultural yields. I've done reports here where higher heat does not mean more crops. Higher heat usually means reduced crop yield and reduced nutritional value. So you're going to get less food to feed more people and then you're going to have more people dying especially those that are physiologically uh, compromised, dying from the heat. And usually with the heat comes high humidity. And if you have high humidity, per perspiration will not cool you down. That tends to lead to hyperthermia. So Dr. Baldwin continues, if you look at the deadliest heat waves in Europe and the United States, many have more unusual temporal structures with temperature jumping above and below extremely hot levels multiple times. You get a heat wave and it leaks. Get a cold snap. Well, here in Alaska, you get a cold snap probably replaced by another cold snap. But that's the climate here. That's normal. We don't even get those anymore. Climate scientists have repeatedly warned that as the planet warms overall, the number of places where potentially deadly heat waves will hit will inevitably rise. If humans continue to burn fossil fuels at ever-increasing levels, heat waves usually experienced once a century could return every few years to become the new normal. Keep in mind, I talked uh, about in an earlier video about chaos theory and slight perturbations in the initial conditions can yield different results. Well, what humans have done to this planetary system is we have perturbed the system in such a manner that it is trying to seek its new steady state. But because of continual perturbations, it cannot find its new steady state, leaving us with what we're facing with and dealing with uh, as the quote-unquote new normal. By 2100, most people on the planet could be at risk some of the time as heat extremes become more severe and more frequent. Now, there are some who said that civilization will be done by 2050. Either the In some parts of the world, the combination of, here we go, high humidity and high temperature really could kill just after a few hours. High humidity, you can't cool down. Hyperthermia will kill you. If you get overheat, your proteins break down, and you can lead to brain seizures, yeah, it will kill you. New researchers started to assess 
the probability of potential famine simply because devastating extremes of heat could endanger crop yield on two continents in the same year. I've, in other videos, I've discussed the effects of high heat on crops, on their uh, the yield, the nutritional values, as well as what humidity does to them. Again, I encourage you to go through my videos and uh, watch those videos. They're there. So now, okay, so what are the probabilities of this happening? Heat extremes can kill. The 2010 heat wave in Russia is estimated to have caused around 56,000 extra deaths. And U.S. scientists recently counted 27 ways that sweltering heat can claim lives and devastate families. This Princeton study, led by Dr. Baldwin, was published in the journal Earth's Future. And it's just preliminarily preliminary study looking simply at the probabilities of back-to-back -back heat waves. Policymakers, city authorities, and medical chiefs need to know what new hazards global heating can bring, and the study is, the scientists say, just the first step. Again, scientists do the, uh, we do the analyses. We collect the data, we analyze it, we present our findings, we make recommendations. It's up to politicians, it's up to policymakers to act upon the recommendation and to implement policies to address those. The study it does identify the precise problems that come with severe temperatures, especially for the already vulnerable, even in such places as New York City. And it's probably going to be worse in cities, even all the concrete and asphalt, which, you know, are a lot hotter. Walk on, uh, go outside the air temperature, say, uh, 38 degrees C. We'll walk in a nice uh, grassy meadow. Heat or cool. Go walk on asphalt. You'll be burning your feet. So Dr. Baldwin states, surveys of low-income housing in places such as Harlem have found that after a heat wave has ended, Temperatures indoors can remain elevated for a number of days. A swift return of the big heat could multiply the stresses. And don't forget, a lot of these places typically have poor ventilation and the materials will hold heat. For example, you know, you get log cabins here in Alaska. There's a thing called thermal mass, right? It takes a long time to heat up, but you know, you get a wood stove roaring and, right? and the logs hold the heat. Kind of the same idea here. You got thermal mass to take into account. Her co author, Dr. Michael Oppenheimer, said, We want to know how the effects of compound heat waves will differ from and amplify the already severe consequences for human health, infrastructure stability, and crop yield that we see from single event heat waves. I was mentioning crop yields as I also stress. So, once again, other ramifications of what is happening due to human activity. Thank you for your time. Hey folks, it's a reminder to please share my videos with others and to also please tell others of my channel. Please subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so that you receive notifications when I upload new videos. I also hope that you will consider supporting the work that I do and supporting this channel by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.